Thank you so much for that warm Hobart welcome. How many of you guys are here because you love Hobart? Okay, everybody. And how many of you love the waterfront? Wow, okay, we're done. Our work here is done, huh? It's a, it's a swipe left moment. Well, I think your waterfront is really great. Um, but I think that there's some things that I've seen that I wanted to offer up to you today uh, for you to, to kind of chew on and see if maybe you want some more things to happen at your waterfront and if there's ways that it could serve you even better. Uh, so, as was mentioned, my name is Ryan Smolar. I'm with Placemaking US, and we're a national placemaking organization in America. And a lot of what we do is go around the country and just look at things and talk to people. <laughs> and it's the best job ever because we'll go on a road trip for three months and go to 70 cities and meet with community members, uh, politicians, uh, you know, uh, technical professionals, people who work for the city, and learn what they're trying to do, the places they've created, uh, how they worked, and how things could have maybe been done for an even better uh, outcome. And that's kind of in our library of thought as we ramble down the road to the next and the next place. We've done this by uh, road, I mean, sorry, by car. We've done a, a three-week train trip to 16 cities. Our next dream is to do one by boat. So hopefully you'll be seeing us pull into the harbor one day on a, on a big boat trip. And I've attended placemaking events all over the world. Uh, not just in the Western developed world, but in places like Nepal, India, um, in Europe. And this is me actually at Placemaking Week India at a formal event where I accidentally showed up in a groom's outfit. And it was very successful. I got three bridal offers. <laughs> and this is the current trip that I'm on that was mentioned. Uh, it's a three month trip, or what I like to call it Q1. And it started out in uh, Long Beach, California, which is the port city that I'm from, uh, up to uh, the Bay Area, another port city. Hmm. Uh, and then flew over to Japan, uh, was in India, Nepal, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore, and now it's uh, March, and we're marching across Australia. And this is a great uh, trip that's been organized by Dean, my partner at Town Team Movement, who's a group that helps uh, communities organize around doing good and making positive change in their community. And it's really a learning and sharing exchange. Although I get, have had the privilege of getting up here to talk to you guys, I pretty much came here to learn from Australia and learn a lot of the great practices that you guys are employing here to make great places and drop any tidbits that I can from my experiences. We were just up uh, in Launceston where I feel like they talked as much about themselves as they talked about you guys down here. You're a hot topic uh, for the folks there. But it was just so impressed with um, the way that people there really support each other, care about their city, uh, want to bring their innovations and ideas to the table. And we really spent a lot of time trying to triage like why certain things maybe weren't working out for folks or why folks weren't connecting. And uh, it, was, it was just a wonderful time. So I'm really absolutely excited to be down here. And uh, you know, I'm a placemaker, so we really like to you know, be in the places we're at. And we're obviously in this sort of conference room environment under those fluorescent lights. We're not on the waterfront. And so I thought, you know, we really need to bring the waterfront into this room. We need to <laughs> summon the sea and invoke uh, you know, Poseidon's trident. So I thought we could maybe start off by together singing a little sea shanty. <laughs> so I hope there's some strong singers here. I know we have the Terrapin uh, Theater Company, uh, and uh, hopefully you guys know this little ditty. But if we could get a, some bit of a backbeat here, so like a, all right, OK, one, two, three, four. What would you do with a drunken sailor? What would you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? Way hey up she rises, way hey up she rises, way hey up she rises early in the morning. Put him in the <laughs> he'll be sober, put him in the longboat till he's sober, put him in the longboat till he's sober early in the morning. All right, great, good work, guys. That's fantastic. Okay, so um, 
really, uh, I only got a little bit of education on your waterfront and, and got to Google walk around it with uh, Jaime a few times. And then Dean and I actually just pulled in from Launceston this afternoon and bounced over there and got to see it just for a few minutes. Um, but already, it was really apparent to me some of the big opportunities that are there at the waterfront. So one is that, you know, there's not a clear sense of promenades, of, of where you should be walking and not walking, uh, and, uh, and that drive to draw you forward from, from one space to the next. Uh-oh. It doesn't like it. Oh, there we go. Sorry. This is a little slow. Okay. Uh, the next is that there's a lack of places. As you walk through the waterfront, there isn't these strong gravitational places you want to stay and linger and, and be in and these sort of different vignettes and moments that really could be very, very strong places. Um, it's a little bit lacking in, in uh, reinforcing that. The public art, the, the performances, the activities, they're not reinforcing a, a strong sense of place as you go through it. And then uh, some of the views, you know, and, this, and the, when you're still, and also the wayfinding, the things that are drawing you through it or the orientation are not as strong as they could be. I see my friend Hayden, who's really into walkability, like nodding very, very hard, which makes me very happy. Uh, and then I got to learn that about this really in the best waterfront that I've been to in the world, but it's that as, after you visit the waterfront, you should be able to close your eyes and remember it each, each piece of the day, like it's, it's very strongly evoking memory and story that each place you went through almost was like the pages of a storybook. And it uses the senses to reinforce that as well as the different active uses of those different environments and a bit of whimsy and fun in those that takes things a little bit over the top. So uh, we'll start with one of the, my key things that I learned is that um, waterfronts are really, really evoked importantly by materials. And the best materials used at a waterfront are wood, uh, stone, and sand. Ah, oh, so good. So reinforcing of that waterfront experience. And then there's color, really, really strong colors. This is Miami Beach, all the lifeguard towers there are just really, really beautiful and, and fun and whimsical. This is the French Riviera, blue and white, just very, very well branded with this, you know, more classy even kind of uh, vibe. And these were some of the textures I picked up in your waterfront. Uh, <laughs> this was uh, in the parking area and this one. And then these were the walking areas. So not really that strong of an evocation of of where you should be and where cars should be, but also not really reinforcing the natural environment that is so special when it's at the waterfront. And we saw a lot of this. We saw a lot of lines, like it's kind of like an airport tarmac kind of thing, but there aren't those guys doing this. And so some people were actually following through the lines kind of robotically, and then others were just sort of scattering all throughout and kind of were a little bit everywhere and um, uh, going all over the place. So one of the best waterfronts from a placemaking perspective, if I could get you all on my little boat and we could go out to sea, um, we would pull into Halifax, Canada. Um, this is a, a really place-made waterfront. It has a downtown or a, a development authority that has a mandate to placemake that waterfront. They were so successful at it that they were given a new mandate to placemake the entire state of Nova Scotia. <laughs> and so we could say, okay, they did a good job. What did they do? And so this is their waterfront. And the thing that I want to like, point out the most to you is you'll see probably this red line that goes through it. That is a very, very, very strongly indicated and created pathway for people to experience the waterfront. So whether they enter here and leave here or they come in over there and go here, they're suddenly on the, you are at the place, you are on the groove, you are walking through it, and you're making it happen once you get there. And so this is kind of an overhead view of some, of some of their waterfront. But as you can kind of see, there's the pathways. And then they use these sort of opportunities between buildings to create places. So that's a place, that's a place, that's a place. 
And it's almost like a shadow puppet theater, to borrow something from you guys, where as you walk into each of these areas, you experience something really crafted and really interesting and really integrated. There's businesses there, there's places to sit, there's uh, greenery and nature, there's public art, there's performance. And so it's a series of sort of almost like plays that you're walking through and you can choose to stop at one because it attracts you for one reason or another or you can cruise through to the next one with a, in 150 feet. And so this is a little bit of like maybe what the stage looks like for things to be set on. Um, but you can kind of see here as people are walking through and experiencing the waterfront in a really strong sense of linearity. And it's really nice because they have that sort of linearness, there's some jogging, but there's also that seating element and the businesses all facing forward. And they're really close, as you said, to the water. You're always like, you know, look like you're about to fall in, but it's, uh, people don't. And you have a little bit of this, this sort of setup here, right? There's this uh, really great restaurant where they had the seating out there. They have this really defined um, walkway component. Um, but it doesn't end in something awesome where you'd want to hang out and stop for a while. Um, this is one of those places on that walk, on that uh, promenade there where you come to this just really great open space where you're looking out over the ocean, you're, there's umbrellas, there's movable chairs, uh, and it's really great. And yet there's a lot of areas in the waterfront here that could potentially host a lot of life and for one reason or another they're right off the walkway but they're just not defined in, in a real way. And this doesn't have to be done in a big expensive way at, at all times. You know something as, as simple as some um, colors and floor paint and pattern can start to evoke these notions of place. And even like more whimsical stuff like this little sort of run, in, run for the kids, do some jumping jacks kind of trails and it's really not that hard to get these things from this sort of linear and industrial and parking lot kind of identity to something that's a little bit more fun and playful. And this is that same waterfront. This is some of the seating. You know, seating doesn't have to be boring. Uh, it can be really, really fun. These are like seatbelt material hammocks that have lasted quite well. and. Um, you know, Halifax is not Southern California. They get the same kind of, I think, damp and, and even probably uh, much more challenging weather than you get here. And these things are surviving and doing quite well. They also have lots of really, really wonderful places for families. Their waterfront is a huge family destination and they have these really whimsical, uh, creative, fun places where, where kids and their parents can hang out. This is, I think, probably one of the most famous uh, things that you'll see in their waterfront. This would be like where Elizabeth Street hits the water and it's actually a piece of public art <laughs> and you're not supposed to climb on it, but they clearly know that this is an awesome climbing opportunity and nobody goes in there and enforces it, but the, they've protected themselves and the, it's something that almost no kid can see and not want to climb on and enjoy. And this is the same kind of space where you guys are, where um, you know, where there's an opportunity here to create a fabulous place. It, it's, it's, it's the right size um, and it could be really, really be something. Um, the public art in Halifax is fantastic. I was speaking to a lovely artist back there about abstract expressionism and you know um, the great art scene that you have here. But um, a big mistake a lot of public art makes is it, it tries to be um, really evocative of the, some left brain activity. Like you're going to be there, like you're in the gallery going, huh. And public art is not a ha huh moment. It's, it's a whimsical moment to see something that is fun and, and playful and exciting and evokes memory and, uh, and all of that type of stuff. That's the most successful public art. And almost each of the little um, areas in the Halifax waterfront has some great public art. And there's not just the physical public art, but there's always performance too. They have an incredible busker program where they're working with tons of musicians uh, and each, each, each sort of um, vignette you walk into has a different musician who's creating a different vibe and feeling and attracting audience to it and creating that sense of place. There's another one. And there's activities like that are a little more active too, like this dance floor. 
uh, that are bringing people together and they're dancing and having fun. Uh, I could imagine that activity <laughs> happening here, for example. Uh, and there's just great seating and colors and the way that the businesses sort of create a fishbowl effect uh, or a living room effect of, of facing in on each other so that you feel like you're actually in a comfortable place and you're, you're sort of blocked in by that. And it, it also helps to be like kind of a wind break. You know, there can be a lot of wind out there on the shore and this, you really, we really need a, a bit of a sense of enclosure. And so we saw kind of the start of this, but not quite where you have these um, uh, kind of like uh, food trucks on the water, which are awesome. Uh, but then immediately it's the parking lot and there's not really that, that sense of space for seating and enclosure that you know, really could be creating a wonderful, wonderful dynamic for these places. Um, seating, it should be fun, it should be movable. These are awesome, relaxing Adriatic chairs. People are kicking their shoes up and there's even more uh, casual dining seating back there. Uh, this was some of the seating that I saw earlier where it's the start of something. It's maybe a stage and um, it's, it's more novel than, you know, your typical seating, but it could be so much more with a few more layers added to it. Here's in Washington, D.C. So this is a brand new waterfront that's been created just in the last decade using placemaking principles. The developers um, tested things and then created really more permanent and really more design-led. The D.C. or Wharf waterfront is really design-led, but it has these great swing seats that are just beloved by people, super fun. Uh, this is another one of the world's best waterfronts. This is the Seine River in Paris. And what's interesting about there is really they go the extra mile in summer. So you might go there in winter or fall and you know it's, it's more functional and, and bare. But in summer, they want to keep people in the city. And so they spend a lot of extra money creating uh, beaches and putting out a, a really fun like cabana, like Riviera, furniture and putting up beautiful uh, banners and flags that create movement but also entice people forward. And this is an, another incredible example of creating vignettes. So as you go along, it keeps changing what the scenery is and there's different very, very well-defined areas and it's a staging for life. You know, this is some of the, the seating that we saw and it's great that it's being used and there were a lot of people, um, but half of them are uh, facing the food trucks and the other half are, this was the view that they were looking at. And it, it was confusing to me why it's so successful because usually when you have a bench that faces someone like this, nobody wants to sit there. And the fact that people are actually there means that this is a really wonderful place and it could just be enhanced more and more and more uh, because they're willing to do it. This is a place making project that I did in my city where um, this is at the farmer's market and um, we bought the farmer's market these chairs and they've discovered that, hey, you know, people actually want to sit at these, this um, grassy spot and look out over the ocean. And the city actually came and said, uh, or actually what happened was uh, some boat owner complained, I don't like all those people sitting there looking at me. <laughs> and so the city came and said, well, it's not in your permit. Uh, and so they removed the chairs, but then the behavior had already changed for people. Now people bring their own chairs and sit there. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to show this is that there's a pattern here that's, that you'll see in every waterfront in the world. This is Sicily, and it's where you have the business and you have the seats facing outwards towards the, the water, and you have the walkway. So the people walking see the people eating, and they go, hmm. And the people eating see the people walking, and they go, huh. You know, this is the Girl from Ipanema song. It's basically about this urban design pattern. But as what we saw more here and, and often is the people were not facing outward, they're facing each other along the walkway. So they weren't, they weren't creating this this promenade impact, which is really, really critical piece of the greatest public spaces and walking spaces of the world. Facing out people, water, boom, it creates this sort of energy. And if the, the loop isn't there, it's not going to work. Um, we kind of see a little hint of it here, a little glimmer of hope. Um, there's these kind of um, seats there, and then they have the walkway. There's no, no businesses behind it. 
Um, and the big problem here is that when you then look, okay, the next vignette is, I'm totally confused. Where do I go? I'm going to jump in the water. <laughs> it's not really clear what's happening there, where to go. I guess there's a little man and a little man who's, that's indicating something, but it feels more like an obstacle course than something that's really drawing my spirit through the place, which is totally possible with the landscape that you have here. Um, here's some more you know, refined versions of the same thing. The seating, really comfortable, facing the waterfront. Uh, this is a really interesting one in Malta where it's just sort of this concrete steps, but then this uh, restaurant brings out these couch cushions and creates this very cozy environment and then very conveniently also sells beer to people who sit there. And I was really surprised when I came back at night just how wonderful this place is. It's really just a big staircase, um, but with those added couch cushions, with the, with the business service, and then also there's a band over there playing and some lighting. I mean, they created one of the most beautiful, intimate, uh, public waterfront adjacent spaces uh, that I've seen. And it's not all about the dining and the walking, but you really want to uh, converge active uses at the waterfront. It's exciting to hear about the, the biking pathway that's you know, being discussed or, or that, is, um, that you guys have been talking about. This is in Venice Beach in California. This is Muscle Beach, so it's an outdoor gym. This is where Arnold Schwarzenegger got big. And you can go there any day of the week and there's all these hunky guys <laughs> Uh, working out in their speedos, and then there's always quite a crowd of of, uh, <laughs> of people checking the scene out. And so it's this self gravitating system, and it's one of many vignettes that draws people to the area, and then they walk along and enjoy um, the path. This is in Chicago, bike riding along the waterfront. Um, this, is, uh, this was out, outside your guys' waterfront, and this is kind of the frontage to all of the, the floating um, uh, businesses that are there, which like there was fish markets, there's fish fry, it was really, really good. Um, but this is Lyon, France, where along the river there, they have the same kind of concept with these barges, but they've built these really, really nice little tents where people can sit and it, it kind of mirrors uh, instead of it just being that, it's mirrored. Uh, <laughs> don't cry, ma'am. <laughs> the French have been at this for a really long time. Uh, it mirrors the, and, and it creates a lot of joy. And then there's a park next to it, and there's playgrounds, and it's really, really wonderful. Uh, this is in Philadelphia in their uh, revitalized waterfront, and they did a great job of making use of these outdoor barges. So um, I noticed like a lot of the, the floating businesses uh, that you guys have, they're completely enclosed. They're almost like spaceships floating on the water. Um, but this has created like a, a bunch of patio space, some really cool greenery. It's really, really beautiful, and it attracts a lot of people. And this is in uh, Brooklyn, New York, where they really had that kind of that development pressure you were talking about. And they came up with the idea of basically building developments into piers. And a lot of the development is public spaces or has a lot of public amenities. So as they've reclaimed some of their unused piers or even built new piers, they've built lots of assets for a community uh, to enjoy that have made this waterfront really revitalize and, and something that everybody loves. And this is something you'll see a lot of too in waterfronts is um, actually sort of dumping uh, some of the uh, like construction material to create uh, uh, beaches. And so this is along the Brooklyn waterfront where they've used quarry rocks and also like um, uh, torn down sort of infrastructure to create these sort of more natural landscapes for people, which really, really gets people excited to have a little bit of that nature reintegrated into um, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the system. Now, I'm gonna show you stuff I don't like. <laughs> and this is a really hard one because this is a really beautiful, beautiful thing. This is called Little Island in New York. And it's absolutely stunning. I mean, look, I, have you ever seen anything like this? It's bizarre. This is not AI, I promise you. This is actually, I've been there. Um, but I call this the world's largest potted plant because it's this floating park and it's really, um, it, these items, the, these cement items are actually made out of styrofoam and then cast in uh, cement. 
And it's a really well programmed space and really active. It's funded by a billionaire. And you can you can you get a ticket for free and you go on there. And it's just, but it just feels a little bit like a um, a tinker toy. And you're going into a very prescriptive space that is not doesn't feel as dynamic or real. It's completely curated. It's like being in a train set. And uh, it's, it's not something that I think is as valuable as the more dynamic sort of things I'm showing you, which are really made up by micro businesses, by local artists. Um, this, is, this is the billion dollar placemaking kind of concept at work. And it's very popular, but it also just something about it feels a little inauthentic. This is also very bad. Um, <laughs> this is in Jacksonville, Florida. And one, the thing that I want to point out that is really bad about this is one, the materials, it's brick on the water, which just is not feel good and it's not fun. And then also the promenade, the walkway is completely hanging out in the ocean, uh, far from any business life or any sense of place. And it's very design heavy. You have these beautiful, uh, I guess, sails that are there to protect the, the sitters. But this is really, really heavy and expensive, and it's not creating any kind of social dynamic, and, and the, the pathway and places are not reinforcing each other. They are trying, like they do a sip and stroll on the water and do activate some of the, the wider areas of the, of the map, but it's really not, um, not something that works in general. Now, the, the thing with the, this city is it's very historic and it's very beautiful. There's so many awesome buildings. But because of the eras in which it's built and the material, it's a lot of sandstone color. And so color pop is really, really a powerful tool that you guys can work with. And so this is uh, Singapore, this is a uh, boat key, and it is like lit up and exciting. And this is actually like the night, oh no, this is Clark Key, I think. And it's really like the nightlife-y, you know, vibrant part of the of their uh, waterfront. This is that same one in Philadelphia I showed you earlier, that barge. And it really has a vibrant, vibrant nightlife. This is also Philadelphia. This is the adjacent park to the uh, waterfront, not too far from where that barge is, and creates this complete enchanted forest kind of feeling with color, I mean with light. Um, this is a, like also an abandoned pier that is turned into a really beautiful space in Philadelphia along that same walkway. So it's just absolutely enchanting, electric, otherworldly environments. And this is literally an abandoned <laughs> place with no roof. And it's simply gorgeous. It's a garden and it has businesses in it and it's really working and wonderful. Um, this is back in Halifax, a few blocks from the waterfront where kind of the hip areas in town are really, really, they're historic buildings, but then there's a lot of interesting paint and colors going on, and it feels the sense of sort of messiness, but also vibrancy, and this very much is attracted to younger, cool, the cool crowd. Um, this is up in uh, Vancouver in um, uh, Granville Island, and it kind of shows you how even the industrial, you know, partners who might be a little like, Oh, what? You can do fun things? I don't know. Um, these are giant working silos, and they're very famous for how cool and interesting that they are in being repainted. I wanted to bring up um, something else here, which is how you access the waterfront. And I think one of the really interesting case studies in this is La Rambla in uh, Barcelona, Spain. And I thought La Rambla meant like, because you ramble down, you know, it's like w walk down it. Um, but it actually means sand. And it, it's a nod to the fact that this street was a river that, that dumped into the sea. And so as you join La Rambla, wherever you are, and you walk through this town, you end up at the ocean. And it's a really, really powerful concept of a spinal column for the city that enters into that, that waterfront. It's kind of like Elizabeth Street could be um, if it was really reinforced in that way. Now this is a view without labels of Elizabeth Street's reach to the water. And it really feels from overhead like, a, like where is it? How, where's the linearity? You know, you can't really see it looks like a muddled street fabric and then there's the, a waterfront um, zip locked onto it. Um, this is the same kind of view of Barcelona and you can clearly see where it is and that it's drawing people to the riverfront and a few, and a few parallel uh, streets are doing the same. 
This is a similar concept where, near where I live, where it's more of actually a residential street, but each sort of uh, few blocks, there's one of these that you can literally see the ocean, you're drawn to it no matter where you are, and this is quite a hill that you're going down, but it's wonderful in its ability to take you to, through to that sight line. And then where then the water and the road meet, it's great to have an incredible plaza um, uh, or a central square. So this is in um, uh, Portugal, where the same kind of concept of the street hits the water, turns into this staircase. Uh, this is in Venice, uh, where the San Marco Plaza hits the water. And this is <laughs> where we hit the water here. And I think there's more to be done here to make this that really the excellent um, place that it is. I think Dean said it best when we were walking around, he's like, this should be the number one place that people who come to Tasmania come to visit. And it, it really deserves that face and that level of activation. And it could be absolutely spectacular. You have all the, the bones for this to have this vibrant, wonderful daily life and visitor life there. Um, and this is uh, uh, Washington DC again, the, the wharf, and it shows using very contemporary materials creating that similar thing. I know we're not Europe, I know we don't have the <laughs> Venetian architecture to backdrop us off, but actually just creating these forums uh, can be really successful. And so this is the waterfront that was just created a few years ago uh, in Washington DC. Um, look at that amazing kind of spiral that kids like to just run up a little bit and slide down and it creates this idea of whimsy and something completely different that really excites people. Um, they built these little islands out in the ocean that were kind of part of a concept to help clean the Potomac River, but they ended up being these really great kayaking attractors. And so kayakers kind of come through and use it as an obstacle course and that draws attention from pier walkers and it kind of creates that, that um, back and forth that we talked about. This is some really low cost, you know, community led steps on doing this kind of work where this is in Malta facing the sea and just some moms got together and painted the stairs and built some furniture and um, created some checker boxing and started the process and start to build excitement. Uh, this is also in uh, Valencia, Spain, uh, the Marina de la Valencia, where it was a very high end uh, uh, sort of super yacht kind of a waterfront and they just started doing these much more low cost, much more creative uh, sort of vignettes throughout and really changed it and made this a place that the community likes to come and hang out and where um, just with paint and things like that, that they really brought people back to the port. And I like to kind of point out that, you know, we're really not trying to move the needle that much here. It's, it's, we, we make it in the Western world so hard to do these simple things to get where we need to go. And we're so privileged and we're so lucky to have the problems that we have and to solve those problems and to make this stuff happen. This is one of my least waterfronts in the world. This is Mumbai, India, and the place is absolutely trashed. And yet there's still people there and they're enjoying it. Um, this is, you know, they have a giant TV screen out in the ocean showing advertisements. Uh, the kids are in a styrofoam uh, refrigerator box as their boogie board. Um, this is the riverfront. Uh, that's all trash. And kind of here's the development plan here is that once the river completely fills with trash, you put a road over it, you've got more slum. And so these are the problems that they're dealing with and it's absolutely massive and devastating. We're trying to put out some chairs. We're trying to create some comfort for people. We're trying to get people off the couch and moving along, along, along a beautiful waterfront. This should be a lot easier than it is. Uh, and I think we can do it. And um, this is uh, the pier in Madurai, India. I asked, what's with the pier? They're like, what pier? <laughs> I, had, I don't know, this thing's all broken in the ocean. And they said, oh, the old pier? But I'm like, where's the new pier? You know, it's just sort of um, incomprehensible um, to them and to us what that even is. Uh, and that's not what we're dealing with, you know. Uh, this is in the U.S. and this is also just inspiring as to how, how much better a waterfront can become. This is the waterfront in Portland, Oregon. And this is it in 19, I don't know, 70 or so. And this is it today. They 
collectively said, we don't want that thing. You know, we want our waterfront back. And they turn that into a giant linear park and it's full of flowers and people and markets. And it's a decision that was collectively made and made happen. Uh, this is similarly in San Francisco where the Embarcadero Freeway in front of their waterfront actually was damaged in an earthquake and they decided we don't want to rebuild it. Let's, let's build people places. And they have plazas there and pickleball now, if you know what that is. Uh, and markets and really, really an amazing reclaimed space. And so um, I don't think it's too far and too much to ask that that become, you know, more like that and that this place become more like this place. This is stuff that we can, we can get done and make happen here and it would be really, really wonderful. So thank you so much for seeing some of these ideas with me and I look really forward to discussing them further with you and seeing what you like and don't like and where there's movement for improvement. Thank you.